Good morning, YouTube. I have a busy day today. I've been up since four. I've been writing and I wanted to do a quick video today because now I have to go get my car serviced. Then I got to pick up the kids and we've got all these things to do and it's just going to be one of these busy, busy Saturdays. But this video I wanted to make today is about a subject I've wanted to do for a long time. A lot of people don't realize I've studied golf with probably 20 PGA professionals and a half a dozen of them are among the most famous teachers in the world. And this is, I think, a pretty big deal that a lot of my subscribers don't realize. And um, when I talk about my teaching today, I'm, I'm a believer that I'm one of the best teachers for regular golfers in the world. And the reason I say that is because I rebuilt my swing. Not only did I rebuild my swing to a pretty high quality level, but I've had the influence of all these very, very famous teachers. And the first one I'm going to talk about today is David Ledbetter, my first golf teacher. Now, just to give you an idea of what's been going on in my golf game, I played yesterday. I hit 13 greens in regulation. As you guys know, I've been working a lot on my short game. And five holes I had to chip and pitch. Some of, the, some of them were, were pretty healthy pitches. I got up and down four or five times. So the working on my pitching is pretty darn important. So I think that that's, that's something that is paying off. And one of the lessons that I'm working on comes from David Ledbetter. I asked David on my second or third lesson, I said, hey, do we ever work on short game? He goes, stiff wrists. Stiff wrists around the green. And that was it. And so let me tell you the whole story. So I began playing golf about the age of eight. I really started to get hooked on it around 10, 11, 12, started playing in tournaments. And the summer between my eighth and ninth grade, the summer before high school, I won a tournament called the Bagwell. And it was a, it was a three-day tournament. I won my flight. I shot 77 on the last day. And my dad said, it's time for you to take some golf lessons. I want to take you to a good golf teacher. I'd done junior golf and you know, it's, you know, everybody fooling around. I had, I basically imitated my older brother, Don, who had a classic swing, lifted his lead heel, swung very much like Jack Nicklaus. So I went to David Ledbetter and the first thing I was struck by was he, he was about six foot six, maybe six foot seven. He was one of the tallest people I'd ever seen in my life. I was like, oh my gosh. And so day one, David and I started working on the swing and, and we talked about philosophy. He had me hit a, a eight iron. I think it was a seven or eight iron he asked me to, to hit. And then he asked me, he said, wouldn't it make more sense if you want to hit a consistent shot that you don't move the lower body so much, if you stabilize the lower body and just turn the upper body against it, doesn't it make sense that you'd be able to hit the ball more consistently? And I said, yeah, yeah, that makes plenty of sense. So the first thing we did was instead of lifting my lead heel, I learned to keep my feet rooted in the ground and turning against the ground. And this is something that later on when I started my swing evolution, I, I gave David a little bit of grief about this at times in my videos, um, you know, because I was older. I wasn't 15 anymore. I was in my 40s and I'd lost a lot of flexibility and I really couldn't turn my shoulders 90 degrees against stable hips. So for me, it was very important that I allowed my lower body to work. This later became more 
influenced by Greg McCatton. But at any rate, that was the first thing. The second thing was I had a little inside over the top move when I was young. And so David had me swing more on plane. Okay. And he had me use my arms where I would allow them to rotate open as it went around on plane, square up and go through. So that was another, another major thing that I worked on for a long, long time. And, and I have to admit, I felt pretty natural keeping my feet planted. That wasn't a hard thing for me to change. But I always like to have the face of the club kind of looking at the ball and rolling the face away from the ball. That kind of was the first time I tried to play golf in a way that felt very unnatural for me. So that's, that's something, there's a lesson to be learned in there. So my freshman year of golf, I started playing for the Lake Wales High School golf team. And I was a rambunctious young man. And I got in trouble for spray painting the water tower behind the high school. <laughs> you know, I'm sorry. That's what happens. And so I got in trouble and I had to do community service and wash police cars and all that kind of stuff. Right. So after my first match, I had to do that for something like a month. And so I missed a bunch of golf events. But my coach saw me out there working on everything that David Ledbetter had taught me. And so when I came back to play on the high school golf team, we were playing the number one golf team in the district, which was Kathleen. And my coach had me play the number one position against the number one player in the district, whose name was Paul Buchanan. He also played with Scott Brown, who was another dynamite young golfer. They were both way older than me. Paul was a senior. Scott was, I think, a junior or sophomore. And I was a freshman. And I was still, I was like 110 pounds. And so I went out there and I shot one under. I shot 35 and tied Paul Buchanan. And I walked off the green that day and my dad, he didn't really come to many golf events, but he was standing there with my golf coach and they were just having a, a conversation and they didn't have any idea what I shot. And I walked off the green and um, my coach said, oh, where's your scorecard? Where's your scorecard? And he looks at it and he goes, 35? You tied Paul Buchanan? So... That's the greatest moment I ever had on a golf course. And I owe it all to David Ledbetter. I worked my tail off on all the things that David told me. I was very, very honored to take lessons with him. I wound up taking three lessons with David. And the next couple of lessons, I'll tell you, is maybe four lessons. But the next few lessons, it became a drive-by lesson. Lesson one, he was with me for an hour. The later lessons, he'd take a look at my swing, tell me to work on something, and he'd drive by again 15 minutes later, take a look, and maybe tweak something. At this time, he had people all up and down the range. I started seeing people like Dennis Watson, and most importantly, Nick Faldo, which I was like, there's Nick Faldo right down there, another giant man. And he was hitting drivers like 240 yards just with this like super smooth, slow swing. And so, of course, I'm like slinging my driver as hard as I can, trying to be like, hey, look, I can hit as far as you, Nick Faldo. <laughs> so dumb. Oh, my goodness gracious. It's crazy. So... At any rate, getting back to David Ledbetter, the thing that I learned that was the most important that stuck with me, uh, but, you know, besides stiff wrists, which is still in my game. In fact, I'm working on that. The thing that I learned was how hard you have to practice. So when I was out there on the tee, Nick Faldo would be there when I got there. And he'd be there when I left. These pros, they work their butts off. It's their job. 
you know, to me, practicing was hit a bucket. And that wasn't very often. That wasn't all the time. So that's when I got a shag bag. And that's when I learned where I had to hit. Like I had something like, I think, 153 balls in my shag bag. Um, and I think I would hit it three times. And, you know, that'd be in the neighborhood of like 450 balls, you know. So, you know, the old adage of hitting 500 balls a day started to actually make sense to me. Um, so I'll always be appreciative of David Ledbetter for what I learned from him. He's truly one of the giant teachers in the history of golf. In fact, he's the teacher I credit with moving golf out of the classic period into the modern age of golf instruction. And, uh, you know, there's something to be said about that. You know, so many major champions, so many things that he's done that have been controversial. Um, but he's been the guy that, that really, really set the standard for golf teachers. And today I'm a golf teacher. So I really, really appreciate what I've learned from you, Mr. Ledbetter. It's been pretty awesome. Speaking of golf teaching, I teach at Eaton Canyon Golf Club. If you want to have a lesson, hit me up, Christo, at myswingevolution.com. And the next MSE Intensive is September 3rd and 4th here in Pasadena. It's a golf school. It's a weekend, 18 hours, and I teach what I believe is the most effective golf swing that I've learned over 40 years from over 20 PGA teaching professionals. It's a pretty unique hybrid, but son of a gun, it works like crazy. So hit them long and hit them straight. Do you have trouble slicing the golf ball? How many times have you heard people tell you, you're swinging over the top, that's your problem? What if I told you the natural motion of swinging over the top is actually the best way to hit the golf ball. Would you think I'm crazy? Well, I'm here today to tell you about the over-the-top miracle. The best part is it's a natural motion based on a throw. I worked, what I worked on there was trying to get as far back as I could inside, tried to stay down through the ball. Do you think uh, you picked up some yardage since we've been working uh, on this it, stuff? On the driver, at least 50 to 60 yards. It's dynamite. It's crazy. You don't have to be stuck with an over-the-top slice. That's why I created the new video, The Over-the-Top Miracle. Transform your game with the over-the-top miracle swing at myswingevolution.com.